Hello, my name is Graham Roche, and I'm going to be taking through you through one of the new features in Micron 2.1, which is the new Gradle plugin. Uh, so, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Graham Roche. I'm the creator of Grails and Micron and an art at Oracle Labs. Uh, I won a Groundbreaker Award a few years back, and I'm a Java champion, and I'm currently working at Oracle Labs, leading Oracle's contributions to the Micronaut framework. For those who don't know what Micronaut is, it is a new um, application development framework focused on modern architectures such as serverless and microservices. But it's also a complete application framework for Java for any type of application. So whether you're building a command line application, a serverless function, a web application, or anything, uh, pretty much anything that has static void main, Micronaut is for you. It uses Java annotation processes to essentially pre-compute your application infrastructure uh, at compilation time, eliminating things like reflection, uh, runtime proxies, runtime bytecode generation, and dynamic class loading, anything that would slow, you down, slow down your application, making the cold starts and memory performance really, very good. You can think of it a bit like a supercharged version of Dagger uh, for the server, and you can find out more information about it at Micronaut. For those of you who don't know what Graal VM is, Graal VM is a uh, virtual machine out of Oracle Labs, which allows you to run your programs faster everywhere. What does that mean? Yeah, you can see in JIT mode, increase of application through throughput and up to 20 to 30% reduced latency. And it allows you to build, compile applications into self-contained native images, taking your existing Java application and turning it into a native binary, which is suitable for cloud deployments like Kubernetes. It also allows you to seamlessly interoperate multiple different languages and libraries. And there are is there is a truffle language framework that allows you to communicate between Ruby, uh, Python, and other implementations such as Java. In terms of Micronaut and Graal VM, Micronaut and Graal VM are essentially a match made in heaven in that Micronaut uh, uh, essentially computes the framework's infrastructure compilation time in a, in a reflection free manner which means that there's a lot less work to do in terms of building a native image because you don't need to, need to configure anything. Micronaut is already ready to be built into a native image thanks to the way it eliminates runtime bytecode generation, runtime um, proxies and dynamic class loading. And you know, it's, they, they work so well together that I'm now working in Oracle Labs and having a great time doing it. Uh, once you've computed your native image with Micronaut, you can expect startup time of around 20 milliseconds and memory consumption to drop and to around 18 megabytes, which, which by Java standards is amazing. So uh, this, this particular demo, I'm going to be talking about the new Micronaut Gradle plugin and the reason we built it. So with the integration between Micronaut and Graal VM, we have been trying to make it easier to build native images. And that was one of the goals of creating, coming up with a Gradle plugin for Gradle users that uh, makes it easier to build native images, uh, both locally and with Docker. So, um, it, so in order to get started, I'm going to show you um, now exactly what that means. So I'm going to create an example app, which I'm going to see into and open it up in IntelliJ IDEA. And you'll see that this example app features a Gradle build. And at right top of your Gradle build here, you'll see that I'm applying a new plugin for Gradle called IO.micron.application. Now, what this does is it sets up all the necessary annotation processes and configuration that you need to get going with Micronaut, so you, you don't have to. There is a Micronaut block, which allows you to customize how this works. Uh, for example, in the processing block, you can enable or disable incremental annotation processing, and uh, for example, customize which annotation packages you want to process as needed. Um, you can, the rest of the, the build is fairly simple. We have some dependencies on Micronaut validation runtime and HTTP client, a pointer to the application class name, and your Java source compatibility. An interesting part of this is the runtime setting which tells Micronaut which server runtime you want to use. Now, we'll be talking about this uh, more in a minute. But essentially, with this very short Gradle build, you're already up and running. So I can you know, already come in here and start my application, and it's, it's ready to go directly from Gradle. Now, um, and of course, I can come in here and run my tests. And they're already set up to execute correctly. 
um, out of the box. So now where things get really got to get interesting is you'll notice that when, when I create a new Micronaut application, Micronaut 2.1, there is no Docker file, there is uh, nothing specific to native image. However, we can uh, essentially build native images already. So I can say gradle image, and that will um, compute a native image for me uh, directly with the Gradle build locally. Now this is gonna compute a native image for my local machine, which is currently running OS 10. Um, therefore, um, you know, I'm going to get a Mac-based image, which you can run on any Mac-based architecture. Uh, that's clearly useful, but you know, with most people deploying to Linux uh, environments is probably not useful for taking your application into production. Um, so one of the things we let we allow you to do with a new plugin is to compute the native image with, with Docker. So I can say Gradle W docker build um, image, sorry, docker build native uh, is what I was looking for. And that will build a native image on Docker. The advantage of building in Docker is that it's going to build specifically for the correct uh, application architecture. And I can run this native image inside a Docker container and deploy it to, uh, to things like Kubernetes and so forth. Uh, so that's gonna go up and build uh, my native image. And you know, it will, it will take a little bit of time to do so, but once complete, you'll have a fully um, native image without having to configure anything else. You can also run Gradle W Docker push native, um, which will push the native image to your configured uh, Docker repositories, either Docker Hub, Docker Hub if, you're, if you're using Oracle Container Registry. And um, in addition to that, I can also build a non native version. So I can say Gradle Docker build. And this will build uh, the regular Java version um, into a into a Docker container, which then I can run with uh, Docker Run, like so. So um, so yeah, the the new Gradle plugin allows a lot of customization and ability to build different Docker images and integration with native image. If you wanted to come in and customize the native image construction, you can do so. Uh, using the native image task. So there's a native image task, and you, for example, you can pass additional arguments in here. For example, to make it a static image, we can pass in hyphen hyphen static, or any other native image arguments that you need to customize the native image generation process. Now, whatever you set here also applies to the Docker build as well, so that you don't have to duplicate things in different places. Uh, now going back to that runtime thing, this is a really cool uh, feature of the um, of the Gradle plugin. In that, you know, if for example I were to create a controller here, uh, if I was able to type uh, example, and you know, this will set up a controller here that essentially responds to the slash example endpoint. Um, so if I were to run this application locally. Um, like so, and then uh, open this up in a browser and go to slash example. This uh, controller response is being served by a netty web based web server. However, I can come in here and I can go back to my build, and for example, I can switch to Tomcat as an example, and then I run it again and uh, restart the application. And you can see that now, now instead of netty, I'm using Tomcat, so I've switched. Uh, my runtime implementation uh, without changing any of my application code or dependencies. And um, what, where it gets really interesting is when I go to start thinking about serverless. So for example, I can switch to Oracle function to deploy Oracle functions in serverless and uh, stop it again and run it. And essentially now uh, we're running an Oracle function environment where I can uh, send requests to my function and deploy this, uh, deploy Docker images to Oracle Function Service. Uh, same thing with all the different uh, other different platforms. So now, if you want to learn, learn more about all the different options in terms of the runtime and how to configure the Micronaut Gradle plugin, I recommend you go to GitHub and you go to uh, Micronaut Projects and you go to uh, Micronaut Micronaut Gradle hyphen Gradle plugin. And you will find uh, a README which talks about and documents all the different use cases and configuration options and so forth. 
and also describes the different available uh, tasks, which these are the different tasks that the Gradle plugin adds, and also uh, describes the different uh, times, including uh, how to publish Docker images and so forth. Uh, but in terms of the runtimes available, you've got Minty, you've got Jetty, you've got Tomcat, um, Lambda, Oracle Functions, and uh, function support for all the popular function platforms in the cloud, and so forth. So really a lot of cool stuff going on in the new Gradle plugin, um, as you can see, and it greatly simplifies uh, how you build things. Now, the other important thing to note is that when you change uh, to a different runtime, we also adapt how the native image is built. Uh, so, for example, if I were to build a um, view Docker build native for the Oracle function runtime, what you will see is that the um, the Docker build that is is actually going to use uh, use a customized uh, Docker build that uses Project FN and uh, Oracle's uh, function infrastructure to build a native image that is compatible with Oracle function. Uh, so simply by switching the runtime, we're able to customize how the, the, the Docker file is constructed. Now, if you do want to get uh, into the detail and start customizing your, your Docker file, you can uh, come into the build directory. And if you look at build Docker, you'll see these, these are the generated Docker files. And you can drag and drop these into your root project and customize them to your, your heart's content if you have any custom requirements. And the Micronaut Gradle plugin will pick those up. So uh, really uh, a lot of cool stuff going on with this. And I, hope, I think it's going to make a big difference to building Micronaut applications. As you can see, the new Gradle plugin is super awesome. It makes it uh, easy to build native images, easy to integrate with Docker, and build applications that are essentially independent of the cloud platform or runtime that you are targeting. I hope you enjoyed this presentation. Uh, let, us know what, uh, let us know what you think in the comments.